It is Sunday, the 28th, at 12.58pm. Uh, I received some paperwork on Friday when I wanted to go pick up my unemployment check from the unemployment office. And this paperwork is telling me that because of the amount of money that I made back in 2009, my claim has been modified. So now, um, with this new claim, I'll be making 68 bucks a week instead of the 400 and something that I was making the previous claim. I don't understand why this has happened, considering that I'm still on my original claim, the extensions, but apparently uh, this has been put through, and so that means that I'll be making, uh, every check I'll make 138 bucks instead of the 800 and something. Which means that this is the last month, unless I can call them tomorrow and straighten things out, this is the last month that I will be in this apartment before I move into a, uh, a, um, what is it, a, a, not a trailer, but a sort of a camper that sits out front of my mother's house. It's, uh, sort of like this uh, modified pickup truck thing. I mean, no, it's not actually a, a pickup truck that's mo modified, but the way, best way to explain it is it has the same sort of body shape as a pickup truck, but it's got this big old thing on the back so that you can go camping in it. You know, there's a bed in there, and I'm sure maybe one of those little mini stoves and whatnot, but uh, the space that I'll have available to me will be about, I don't know, maybe uh, half the size of the room that I'm living in right now, and that's uh, length and width-wise half. Um, it'll be enough for me to have a place to lay down, and because it'll be out front of my mother's house, uh, chances are that uh, the wireless will reach out there, so I'll still have internet access. As far as uh, electricity goes, my mom said something about maybe running out a power cord to the, to the camper so I can have something to plug in, so I'll still have my computer, which is still a blessing. Um, but even that may not be a reality, considering that my mother's house is the, uh, the bank is screwing around with that, and they may end up trying to repossess it or something, I don't fucking know. But needless to say, the situation has turned a bit more dire than usual. And, uh, that's the situation that I'm dealing with. Now, obviously, I've tried to maintain perspective the entire time. Yes, of course, I admit that I've made plenty of videos where I've been disheartened or depressed or angry or whatnot because of the difficult circumstances that I've had to deal with in, in terms of uh, uh, difficult as far as my personal life goes, not in the greater scheme of things. And I understand that uh, potentially having these options still puts me ahead of the game for a lot of people that are dealing with situations where they don't have those kind of options available to them. But still, um, I come from a place that seems to be the same color as the place that I'm going. You know, it's been many years since I've had to deal with the difficulties that I'm looking like I may have to face. Yeah, I have a job interview, or a potential, let me rephrase that, a potential phone interview for a job next week uh, I, uh, that was uh, set in motion last week before Thanksgiving. It was like... Wednesday, I had a conversation with a guy, and because of the fact that it was the Thanksgiving week, and the end of the Thanksgiving week, you know, um, nobody at this place that I'm supposed to be interviewing at would be there, so I'm not going to hear from them until sometime next week. But uh, that's the situation that's, as it stands for me right now, is that uh, uh, this living situation is turned into a different direction. Uh, the people that I live with are very nice, and I inform them. I said I wanted to give you a month's head up, heads up, let you know that this is the situation that I'm looking at. The uh, Financially, I'm not going to be able to make this probably next month. I have this month's rent sitting in the bank. Just got to wait for Monday where to, when they'll let me have access to it so I can give them the money. But as far as uh, next month goes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to... I don't know what the government's going to tell me because I should still have a month or two left on my, on my uh, unemployment. But I wanted to let them know. And they came down a co about 20 minutes later and informed me that... They understand my situation and they wanted to help so that they'd be willing to pay 50 of my unemployment or my uh, my rent. And as kind and generous as that is, you know, because they said until you can get things going, we'll pay 50. Um, 
and that is, it's very, very generous of them, but $50 from uh, $700 still puts me in the hole, you know, it's not going to, it's not, I don't, I, I have no way of making an income to uh, get the other 650, because I'm sure if I could get the other 650, I could get the other seven, I can get the other 50, and therefore the 700, but, so, uh, that's the situation as it stands right now, is that, uh, is that even the kindness that's been offered to me, um, the circumstance is just uh, larger than that, and uh, it's uh, you know it's a beautiful thing when people are willing to try and help. It's just very sad when that help, as wonderful as it is, is still not quite enough to do a dent, to make a dent. And um, I'm not stupid. Okay, I I know that just having that kind of kindness in my life is a blessing, and I'm not berating that at all or begrudging it. I'm grateful. You know, and it's not like I didn't know that this situation was going to happen. I just guess I guess I just didn't expect it to happen like this. Um, so that's the situation in my life as it stands. Uh, my brother's bell palsy is still going on. Um, I went with my family on Thanksgiving up to my brother's place. He's got a nice house for him and his his kids. His uh, uh, my oldest nephew lives in the garage, and my two younger nephews each have their own room, and then my brother and sister-in-law have their room, which is cool. And it's not a, it's not a huge house, but it's got a huge yard, so the dogs, they have like two dogs, can run around, and the kids have a place to play, and it's, it's fenced off, so it's a safe place for them to mess around. So it's a good, it's a good little house, and I'm glad that things are going well for my brother, at least in terms of uh, better than they were. You know, he still has the, the face issue, and it's making work for him difficult, and he has to go back to the doctor and whatnot, but still, it's good. And uh, the situation with my uncle, I don't know much. I know he's still trying to, he's trying to make funds to be able to pay the lawyer fees. We're talking fifty thousand dollars in lawyer fees to, to handle this issue, which I think is a load of shit. But you know, people will do whatever they can to make money off of other people. Um, and uh, the situation with my mom's work is apparently still stable after they let go ninety five percent of her department. Uh, they told her in a meeting that they don't plan on cutting her department down anymore. So that's good, I'm hoping. At least for now, she's got stability. But uh, we're still dealing with uh, the financial situation, or the house situation until she hears back from the bank to find out about the fact that they refinanced a bunch of times and they're they're going through the paperwork. I don't fucking know. But, uh, yeah. So that's the situation as it stands. Um, and I wish I had more to say that was positive. Uh, the experience of being me is an odd one. More so than usual. Um, and odd in the context of dealing with certain uh, states of being that I've never had to deal with before. Dealing with urges that I, I usually don't have to deal with. And that's weird for me. I've spent my entire life being um, different in terms of some generalities as well as specifics, you know. Um, and having some of that come back now, years after being in remission or just gone, and having it become a, um, a viable reality is, is disheartening. And I'm also dealing with a, a more active sense of... Uh, disillusionment with the world feeling hopeless or a, a foreboding sense of hopelessness where I can feel it I can see the world as I understand it my part of the world the, the United States of America not and seeing it be something that's just going to continue to collapse and living in a, in a time when that's a reality for me you know it's not about it's not about the history books it's not about watching, you know, communist Russia or, you know, North Korea or China or any of these other uh, countries that have gone through this and watching them collapse and, and reading about their suffering and difficulties. I'm now living in the moment where that's potentially going to become a reality for the United States. And I never, I've never been one of the, kind, I've never been the kind of person that thought that we were above that. I've never been the kind of person that thought that, uh, you know, oh, this will, the United States will never fail, we're too good, that's never been in my, you know, ever been a part of my, my understanding, 
it's just uh, the difficulties that we as a nation have faced have always been ones that are dire on a lesser scale, you know, uh, dealing with political conflicts, dealing with, uh, you know, financial circumstances. I mean, you know, the, 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 the dot-com bust of 2000, and that being a very specific section of the United States dealing with that, but this has become something a bit larger. And, uh, I suppose it makes sense that the suffering of the world that has happened that hasn't affected me, that this is my opportunity to, uh, to experience the suffering. And that's very arrogant to say. Um, what I mean is that the, you know, that the hardships that other people have lived are daily, and I've had my own experience with it being homeless and being um, you know poor and, and living on welfare and food stamps and, and abuse of dangerous neighborhoods and situations and whatnot you know um, those were all realities that I've dealt with at one time but I've uh, I've been living a somewhat realistic um, been living somewhat a somewhat realistic um, uh, separation from that, where my world has been a better place, and I haven't had to deal with those realities for a long time. So now that those realities have come back, you know, I'm not the person that I was then, and I don't know if I'm fully capable of uh, readjusting. Because the person that I needed to be then uh, was a lot more harsh than the person I am now. And I've moved, I'd like to think that I've made advancements and moved away from that. But uh, having to go back there, having to be, you know, an extreme personality, having to live an extremist view, live and die, black and white, moment to moment, you know. I don't know if I'm capable of going back to that and, well, at least doing it in a capacity that um, is successful. And it may sound like, it may sound like an extreme perspective to you to say that going from what I have now to going to such a, uh, you know, such an extreme place, but, you know, that's what I understand this is going to become, you know. I don't know of a lesser version I only know of the extreme version and the recuperation from the extreme version. You know, it's never about acknowledging the world that I'm a part of until that world is about to change and then understanding what it is that I have and understanding what it is that I'm dealing with and then preparing to deal with the new situation. Uh, and what, we're like, what, 12 minutes, 15 minutes into this? But that's the situation as it stands. Is that... Uh, the world as I understand it is changing. And that's actually that's not true. That's not true. The world as I, I understand it is becoming the world as I understand it. Um, and I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just being realistic. This is the reality of the world that I live in. And I have to be prepared to deal with that. And I'm not exactly very excited about the idea. Because I did deal with it a long time ago, and I remember how hard it is, and I don't want to do that again, but I don't have a choice. So, in a nutshell, <laughs> a very, very large, uh, rambling, and uh, dysfunctional nutshell, uh, that's it. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the situation as it stands. I've got a month left, and uh, towards the end of that month, I, I will find out, or towards the middle of the month, I will find out about my living situation as far as my mother's place goes, if I'm going to move into the uh, trailer or if they're going to lose their house because of financial stupidity and then what's going to happen from there. And I will try to keep you updated as best I can, but uh, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to do that. So I will just say that I will make efforts and leave it at that. So hopefully you guys are doing well. I hope that the realities that are a part of your everyday existence are ones that are desirable, the ones that you want to be there. I hope the difficulties that you face, you face with family and loved ones. I hope that you're given the opportunity to know that when the chips are down, 
the people that matter the most are the ones that are most involved. I hope that uh, you get to understand that no matter how hard things get, you are not alone in dealing with whatever it is that you're facing. And I hope that at the end of those days, as they, you know, each day as it ends, when you get to lie down, that you can take a moment to at least breathe comfortably knowing that someone's got your back and that uh, they care about you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I just, I, I pass that along. I hope you all have the opportunity to know that feeling of, of, uh, of being loved and, given the, and being given the opportunity of loving someone back. And that's it. That's, that's it in a nutshell. As long as this has been. All right?